who you see on stage. I, um, I want to take this first moment to thank Hope Boykin. Um, and she's probably watching this right now and is like, oh gosh, what am I going to say? But Hope was a huge, first of all, for those of you who may not know who Hope Wigan is, which they should, <laughs> um, Hope is one of our treasures within the ALE organization. She has been a pioneer and a leader in so many ways, um, in so many avenues for us as a company. And she was a huge part of putting together conversations when everything happened with COVID-19. And I believe when, you know, we originally did conversations, it was a way to, you know, catch up with the virtual world and, and find a way to interact if we couldn't be on stage. And now it's turned into this beautiful vessel for dancers to share their feelings and beliefs and their stances and their experiences and to hear it from us directly. And I think that's so beautiful right now because we have to continue to put our art out there, our stories, our fight, our love, our loss. And this platform has turned into something that was supposed to be with the times and has turned into another way that we can continue to hear our stories and share them and glorify them and glorify our skin color and where we are. So I just want to thank Hope um, for creating something and, and for the committee that really put this together because it's it's so needed and it's so important to have moments like this. So thank you, Hope. And it, with all of that and glorifying, I am so excited, so excited to welcome Miss Yasmin Laidler. She is a great friend of mine. We were in Ailey 2 together. We have been all over the world together and now we get to dance in this company together. And I am just so excited for you all to meet her and to really hear her story and to hear about where she's from and just get an up close look at this beautiful, beautiful friend and beautiful lady. So let me find her so that we can get started with this conversation. I see her, here we go. Waiting, joining the suspense. Yeah, here she comes. Hi, Courtney. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so little. Good, how are you doing? How Good, you doing? how are you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Remember for Yasmin and I that we're working because I talk to Yasmin like every other day, so I know that we have to, you know, well, people want a conversation, you know, they want, they want to be right. able to that. So, how are you doing? How's everything going? Where are you right now? I'm just, and so many things happening, so many emotions uh, arising, um, even with this new um, case with George Floyd. Um, it's like, how do we even dissect what's happening? And it's not a new case. It's not a new uh, issue at hand. It's a reoccurring thing um, with police brutality and knowing that Black Lives Matter and how can we make a change? Um, mm -hmm. We've been fighting this fight for 400 years and now we're in 2020 of June and COVID, of course, was unexpected so that was a time where I think I was like okay well let me reflect um let me realize things that I may want to um um you know fix or bring to light um within myself um so I can be a better person um in my light and for others to see and maybe influence others. Um, so it, it started with COVID and I was like, okay, you're just gonna navigate day by day and like, get- Like that, like in what world are we all sitting at home and have the time to dissect ourselves? I mean, right. we, we all are fortunate enough to be in a company like this where we move so frequently. And then, you know, whether it's in this company or another company or a job or, you know, to have that time to sit and just dissect feelings and thoughts and, and then to have this get all it's 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 definitely a time it's definitely it yeah and then it's like how do we make our voices heard how do we use our platform um 
because being silent is not the way. So how do we make that change? And that change will definitely start not November 3rd, but it starts now, starting yesterday with the primary elections, um, um, you know, starting from local officials and then higher up. We don't have to wait till November 3rd. And of course, I believe my morals is not violence on violence. There's a way to go at things and be heard. So we just have to definitely the black community and others have to educate ourselves and find strategic ways to make that change. Absolutely. And vote and be involved in the community. And there's so many ways to get involved. And what's happening now is there have been so many ways to share how to get involved. Right. I think you are such a light. You are such a beautiful person. Um, and I know that because I know you personally, but I also have had the privilege of watching you be so involved within your own community. I've seen you be so involved within your community from when you went to school in Philly. From <laughs> is from Miami, everybody, and she loves to make that known. Okay, see all of that happening. <laughs> um, you know, um, it's it's. I think a lot of it starts with. Moments like this, using the platform that we have, these careers that we have, that we've been fortunate enough to do every day and using them to spread love and awareness and knowledge and so that there's a world one day where we can live in that's equal. Yes, and mm -hmm. social media, Instagram, not yeah. really a fan of Facebook right now, but that's also a platform where we can use information to spread knowledge to others. So that yeah. is, because we're in isolation still, yeah. so it's definitely an important yeah. pla platform that we can definitely use to spread awareness. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I have to remind myself that we are, we're, we're working because we- Right. <laughs> watching, this is normal. We can chat for hours and hours, so we're going to try to keep it, you know, with the lines and- uh, but I, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you specifically, and I think it's so fitting. Um, this past, well, this past year and the year before, we've had the privilege of performing Rennie Harris's Lazarus. And um, it's it's so, chill, it, in a chilling way, um, so relevant in a way that I always hope that it, it could be different, it could change, but it's so relevant and it's so uh, about the time. and within Lazarus and the story of journey and from being in bondage and from and, and growing and, and coming out resilient. Um, there's a lot of pain within this ballet. There's a lot of, I'm um, in the midst of all of the house pieces. I mean, we grew, we yeah. grew. <laughs> the last section come and we are triumphant, but that first section, um, it's a lot of pain. It's a lot of sorrow. It's a lot of the same gut wrenching emotions that we have a difficulty putting words to today at this very moment. And you, this mother figure, um, this woman who feels all of everything that's going on, everything that's happening, and that role, I mean, I've seen you dance and perform for so many years, but that was a new level of seeing you on stage for me. And I just wanted to ask you about that role and what that meant. I think it's so, um, <clears throat> it's so, right now as well with mothers mourning the loss of their children and aunts and uncles. And even if some mother, brothers and sisters, everyone's mourning right now, a loss of another brother who did not need to go. And I wanted to know how that role was for you and what that means to you right now. Um, so I can start with from the beginning as far as the rehearsal process and the development of the character. Um, shout out to Linda <laughs> for, um, <laughs> you know, coaching me on the step and um, developing this character as a mother figure because I am not a mother. So I have to tap in some way somehow to deliver the story um, to the audience. So we would talk, we would have conversations and she was uh, expecting. So she was also going to into a life new role of being a mother um, so we had um, dialogue and then we would go over the steps and then I had to do deeper research. So I went 
my first premiere was DC. Um, and then I went to the National Museum and I saw like you only learn but so much of history in school. So I think the mm -hmm. rest is like 50 50. You learn this here and then the rest you have to go and do on your own. So I went to the museum and then to see everything so vivid, it was just, oh, I want to say overwhelming because it was a hard pill to swallow. Knowing that our ancestors have gone through this for us to even get to this point. Yeah. And I want to say our performance was that night or maybe even the next day. So I had to analyze everything that I took in at the museum and how was I, Yasmin Laitler, going to portray this role as a mother figure in this heartfelt, heavy piece. Um, so it was, it took a lot of work, a lot of research development. Um, I can't um, imagine. And it's, it's you as a mother, uh, as a as a mother figure. That's one aspect. And I, you know, for our audience within a role, and we talked a little bit about this with the last conversation, that a role that you have it follows you when it's a role that requires that much um, character building and character development and um, research. It it carries with you throughout that whole yeah. year, that whole week, that whole month, and especially the whole day. And so. I can't imagine because it's also not just uh, a mother figure, but you somehow have to muster up the courage. And I feel like it actually leads into my next question, the courage to be so vulnerable on stage. And as someone who knows you personally, he has me the strongest young woman that I know and something that I admire about you. Um, your strength is just un unmatched in my opinion and in my close friend circle and to see you allow the stage to be a safe space on that level was, it unlocked a certain sense of freedom in me that I didn't know that I had. And I wanted to know how was that like, because this role requires a lot of you. It requires a lot of, I'm no longer Yasmin. I am this mother figure who's watched history just continue to try and defeat to, to defeat us and and how how do you I'm asking because I don't even know if I had that but how how do you well how are you able to be so vulnerable in that type of space I think which brings me to my next point also I think um me meditating and then reflecting on past and present um whether I experience things or not knowing that there is history, there is Black history, and then knowing me as a young woman, African-American woman in America 2020, what I'm struggling um, through, what we as women, Black men, um, are struggling through. So it's like taking the time in to soak everything in, meditate on it, and how can I um, display that emotion or those feelings to the audience so that they can, you know, um, feel what I'm feeling. Um, I think the character also took another um, progressive level when my dad died, um, knowing the loss of someone and then having to see that. And yes, that's not the same situation as losing your son, but I'm also losing a loved one. So seeing and being there uh, step by step, and then literally after his funeral, going into the character role, I was able to open up even more um, to develop that character. And it's only going to go up and up and up, you know? Um, Does it feel different so that you perform it? Does it feel different? Yes. <laughs> Um, I, I think with me, that was the pivotal point of me being from a lead, going from a lead to into a continuous growing artist, mm. um, because our artistry never is, it's always growing. Right. right. Um, 
So we're learning new things, we're experiencing new things, and how are we bringing that into our artistry as women of Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater? Um, so I think because I'm not an emotional person or I don't really express my emotions as easily as others may, um, I think that was my time of dissecting what was happening in a moment to release on stage. So it wasn't necessarily an acting moment in a role that I have to portray. It was real life, real emotions, real things that I was struggling through at the time. I almost missed my cue. That's how <laughs> <laughs> captivated I was. <laughs> Because people were running on, we're supposed to run on right after you. I had like two people behind me, I think it's Chris. It definitely felt like a, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, no, and I think that growth um, and I mean, artistry never, it never stops growing. It never stops uh blossoming and and growing and when I think of us in Ailey too I think of you and Ailey too that's now and um it's it's you as you grow and it's so funny because I'm gonna go back to this quote because it's been like one of my favorites from uh Ronnie Favors um mm -hmm. the legend Favors who said that you know Mr. <laughs> used to tell her that uh you can't always dance about dance you just dance about life and as you grow right. old you get mature you learn love you learn loss and heartbreak and rage and all of these things start to play into your artistry into a different way that not that you might not have had when you were an alien too you were still you were dancing about things that meant that you know with the same weight to you at that time right. but um and i remember actually because you did wait in the water revelations Mm -hmm. Ailey too and then also have started to learn it and perform it now within the first company and I actually wanted to know what that was like um because it's just we're, we're different women we're different artists um but it's still rooted in Mr. Ailey's work and my goodness this this iconic work revelations and how much we need it now we need we need yes <laughs> good I was thinking like oh I just don't know whenever we get back to dancing revelations I what's going to happen to me but um what what was what was that like learning wade for you and you could tell us a little about that, that journey um well growing up definitely we'll get to that later um seeing um ailey through revelations every year was just like mind-blowing um and then having the opportunity to even be in the company and performing revelations was also an opportunity of like, wow, this is really happening. I grew up seeing this, um, seeing people like me do this. And now I have the opportunity to do this. So it was a humbling experience and I was forever grateful. Um, Mr. Powell was like, hey, can you learn Revelations, uh, Wait in the Water? And I was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so I think I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, this is really happening. Um, transferring to the first company, um, coaching, um, props up to Mr. Russian. Um, <laughs> learning it from him was an eye opener. Of course, you know, it's the same steps, but the way he broke it down, um, it was just an eye opener to me as a dancer, as an artist. It's like, okay, it's beyond the step. It's like, what are you bringing to this sacred moment at this given time? Um, so it was definitely a sense of all the words that I'm thinking when I think of revela uh, revelations within the water. It's like purity, baptism, a sacred yeah. moment, rebirth. Um, and it's a serious moment. Um, I would think about baptism and how I was baptized in the church growing up um, and how that moment felt and just reconnecting that moment to this present moment and doing it for kids um, in the mini shows. The mini performances, that's, you know, and I, it's like, I know I miss it because I miss the mini performances. And that's how, so, you know, those are early for everyone. Our mini performances are usually either eight, anywhere between 8.30 to 10 a.m., depending on the yeah. city. 
it's when it's open for schools and buses come in and I mean it's just kids and we actually warm up on stage before we go so they see us warming up and they're screaming and laughing mm -hmm. it's 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 a surreal moment because you just see a bunch of little kids in there you know they're 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 engaged I mean they are engaged and actually I think I remember, I think when we first did, I was umbrella with you and you were doing Way in the Water. Mm -hmm. With Shalvar. With Shalvar. Oh, yes. I just looked, I was like, well, this is a beautiful couple. I mean, all of <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> beautiful. I was like, well, this is a beautiful chocolate way. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at the front row and I love to do that, just to look at the kids and just to see these little kids just, they're looking up and they're just, their mouths are open and they're just in disbelief because... I can't imagine what it is for them to see someone who looks just like them up yeah. there, beautiful, glorified, treasured, all the things that we have to continue to do for our youth now because look at what they have to look live, you know, in the world right. right now. Yes, yeah. yes. I saw a comment from uh, Solomon saying it was a time to cleanse. And it's, yes. Yeah, it's a cleanse. It's a cleanse. It's definitely oh, a cleanse. You're so amazing. <laughs> I just, yeah, you're wonderful. Okay, so I'm actually going to transition. Um, and also for anybody who is just joining us, we are chatting with the fabulous, the powerhouse, the performer, the friend, the... <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine yes, Laidler, um, and I, we, we've been having a great, great chat. We're going to keep on going. And please, actually, please, 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 um, in the comment, not comment box, the question box, submit questions um, so that we can get some questions and, and get some more of her thoughts, and we'll answer them as we get a little bit, uh, a little bit closer to the end. Um, but now I want to jump back. I want to jump back. As I said, everyone, Yasmin is from Miami, and she loves Miami. We can mm -hmm. always when she's home because then it's like this the story is it's, it's just a whole different Yasmin. We always say, uh oh, Yasmin's home. But um I transformation. Love, <laughs> you know, we we see each other in sweatpants all day, and, uh, you know, and uh <laughs> and sweating and so it's like we all just transform. But I, I love how wrapped how tightly wrapped and woven you are within your community. And I actually want to know how you started dancing and for you to tell everybody about your studio and where you grew up. And it's just, it's such a beautiful story. Let's just, I want everybody to know about you before Bailey. Yes, of course. Um, so I started dancing. I was introduced uh, to dance by my mom. She used to dance. So she put me into dance at the age of four. I started tap, ballet, and jazz. Don't ask me how to tap today. I don't know how to do a time step, no anything. But that's the <laughs> point. That was back then. This is now. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I started dance um, because my mom put me into dance. Um, I went to magnet school, art schools all my life, um, middle through college, um, middle school through college. Um, I went to New World School of the Arts, downtown Miami. <laughs> Besides uh, going to New World, I also um, went to a studio called uh, Young Contemporary Dance Theater um, right now. Um, back then, it was called Addiction Dance um, by the lady named Mrs. Young Byron. Everyone probably knows her from Step It Up, Bring It. Um, so she's very uh, well known. Um, then I went to the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. Um, while in school, I was with a dance company called Elyon Dance Theater. If anyone's from Philly or may be aware of Elyon, that's who I danced for while I was in school and college. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I joined and then Oh, and then, yeah. Then I joined A. What was your audition? Remember, remember our um. Well, we didn't have the Ailey two audition together. We had the first first company audition together. Did we audition for Ailey two together? I no, I was already in my first. Year. Mm -mm, yeah, you were already in your first year. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, in all the years. Yeah, getting it mixed up. Um, I auditioned for the company in 2006. I went to the first company audition, and I got cut around somewhere around rep later on. Um, and then Mr. Powell came up to me and was like, hey, can you come to the second company audition tomorrow? And I was like, uh, sure. Mind you, I was going back to Philadelphia right after I got cut. So I had to call my mom and was like, hey, I have to be back uh, in New York tomorrow. We have to figure this out. Because I told him, yes, I'll be there. He's like, okay, we'll figure it out. Um, but I went with uh, my ex-boyfriend at the time. He took me to the audition. Um, and that's how I got into a too. Um, after you know- that... It's so, and for, I, I, well, this is a super, but I remember it, Yasmin is so dedicated, so dedicated, because from what a lot of people don't realize is when you get into Ailey 2 or you get into the first company, it's not that much of a turnaround time in terms of start to rehearse. So mm-hmm. a good chunk of us already lived in the city because, you know, we either came from the school or we were there. Yasmin didn't, however. And for like the entire first like two weeks of rehearsal, <laughs> weeks, the whole summer. I didn't move to New York until summer. the day before tour. <laughs> she commuted from Philly to rehearsal and would get back and then go back and forth every day to and from Philadelphia until somebody, I, don't, I think it was Lloyd. Lloyd. I met but, Lloyd the same day. He said, hi, my name is I'm, Lloyd. <laughs> I was like, wait are you commuting back and forth? And none of us had realized it, which I also, I mean, for us to have not noticed because you were always um, in rehearsal, on time, energetic, full out, like none of us ever even thought of it. And he was like, have you not moved here yet? And she was like, no, I'm working on it. He was like, <laughs> the next thing you know, yes, we, you know, people were like, nope, you stay here, you stay on this couch, but for a whole summer, a whole mm. summer, you commuted yeah. back. And- well, don't I surely did. That's just inspiring. I mean, I just don't have another word for it. <laughs> don't have another word for it. And and looking back, I was like, dang, you really did all of that. By the time we got out of rehearsal, I got on the bus, went home, went to sleep. It's like I probably slept for three hours, had to get back up because I had to commute two more hours to go back to New York. So yeah, that that was that was crazy, Courtney. <laughs> that was <laughs> now, now look at where we both where we both are. Actually, I want to talk about your studio a little bit because um, this isn't just a studio, everybody. This is a family. This is a community, and I think it's just such a testament of how important it is to nurture the next generation and to empower um, young dancers to follow their path. I actually want to talk for you, for you to talk about your studio because um, you're so passionate. You teach a lot. You choreograph. Um, you've set works on Frank Sinatra School for the Arts and Pennsylvania Ballet too. You teach there. You set works. And I, I want to know about the community in which you grew up in and, and what that meant to you and how um, how we can continue to create those own, you know, those same spaces um, for our own communities. Yeah. Um, so even with my studio, I started there when I was in the sixth grade, and I've been tied to my teacher's hip ever since. Um, she calls herself Super Black Girl, and she calls me Black Girl Junior. Um, that is definitely more than my dance mom. She's like my second mom. Um, So I'm forever, ever grateful for her. Um, But she put, she invested so much into me. So I felt like I should invest back, whether it's personal, um, whether it's, you know, having one-on-one conversations with the dancers or just even going back to help for shows. Um, I just feel like I owe that to her because she's helped me so much in the studio and out of the studio um so I just have to I I owe that definitely to her um in this photo young Byron if she's watching I hope she's watching this photo from when we were in Miami 
during our first year and her entire studio had shirts custom made and they all showed up and that's the photo i think that's just like a testament to the love the love <laughs> the love and we yeah. went to visit i do we, we we went to visit oh i have to put it in the other one we went to visit <laughs> um, and we had a great time and it was and i want to even bring up this because in being there i had i had group in a studio but um for me and I think this is such an important conversation to have is is for me I was the only I was the only black kid at my studio there was nobody else and it was smaller and I had never seen and I've kind of you know been within the studio world and seeing that but I, I've never seen a studio that was just that looks like that where I where you could walk in and just see so many beautiful dances of color all in one space and who could go off and who could dance and I just the baby you and made me think of you and all that you've learned and all that you've grown with and the love and support that you have and how you've found a way to dance and do what you love but continue to give back I mean and talk about some of the works you've set as well because you choreograph so much and you teach and you do all of it yeah um so I got the opportunity with Pennsylvania Ballet too um, from college. Um, we have a senior uh, thesis our senior year, and I was awarded the Pennsylvania Choreographic Award my senior year based off my senior piece. So the following year, I was supposed to set a work, and that was my first year of Ailey 2, but I want to say it got extended to my second year of Ailey 2. So I was trying to balance Ailey too and then choreographing for Pennsylvania Ballet. So I had my friend Roderick, because he was in Philadelphia already, go and set some um, phrases on the company because I was in rehearsals. So I was trying to balance the two. And thank God he was able to find time and commit to helping me. Um, <laughs> Because it was it was a great opportunity that I definitely did not want to pass up. Um, so working right. with them, I mean, unfortunately, I was with them for a week in which, you know, time time was at the essence. So um, right. I definitely would like to reach back out so I can have more time because um, I definitely want to get my feet back into choreographing. With Frank Sinatra, I was doing um, Ailey 2 outreach. And I was just having a conversation with the teacher one day because I showed up early and she was like, hey, do you choreograph? And I was like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and she was like, okay, great. We're looking for a female choreographer. Would you be interested? And I was like, yes. So that's how I got that um, gig with Frank Sinatra. And there has been many other gigs after that I couldn't commit to because of my schedule. But I definitely want to tap back into the choreographic mm -hmm. aspect. It's different. You just and you different and the kids it's just you're so humble. Yes, me it's the hardest thing <laughs> that you can talk about herself. I don't know if y'all can see it, but she's probably like, oh there we go. But she has so much to offer and you've so much that you've done. And when I think I mean to be choreographing on students who might really only be two years younger than you at the time yeah. or the same age depending on where they were in life it's just yeah I think you're amazing that's why we're we're friends yourself so, you're just you're just wonderful I don't have I, I get speechless all the time I, it happens to me a lot <laughs> <laughs> once in a while you know uh we dance we, we move so much the company and from my perspective it's it's always such a profound opportunity and like privilege to hear from you about all because we forget not that we don't value it, but we just sometimes lose track because we're so into the work um mm -hmm. and your work has just grown thank this, you so, so, okay i want to get actually i have some fun either or i'm going to change this photo oh wait, i'm going to put it on this one so that we can keep seeing you i have a bunch of photos of you on my phone okay so i, I, I don't mind i might have to put my glasses on <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get to put, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on. I'm squinting. <laughs> so, comments like this. Right. Right, I'm like, what's happening? 
oh, this is why we're friends, everybody. We're really, we're really doing we're really, really good. Okay. Oh, we're doing really good. We're doing really good. Okay, so I have some fun either or questions, and then we're going to jump into some questions um, in the question box. So please submit more. I want to get more so that way we can uh, have some more. <laughs> Somebody said put the glasses on. There we go. They're on. <laughs> Blame the pandemic. <laughs> so that could be your friend. Passes. If your mom was here, she. Okay. Okay. All right. So, pink or black ballet slippers? Pink because you can paint them. <laughs> it's a brown, right? <laughs> Bear or... Fox. Nowadays, before barefoot, barefoot. I'm a barefoot, but you're socks. I well, maybe like... because I don't know. Maybe because I went to University of the Arts, and that's where I got adapted to socks. Mm -hmm. You like you prefer a sock over a barefoot? Okay, okay. Center bar or bar attached to the wall? It depends on the day. Mm, changes. It depends on the day. Mm -hmm. If I feel like, okay, well, let's go for a challenge. You're not all over the place. Then let's do center. I know, because there's nothing but, worse. Than you. you take the bar with you like this, and that person's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a, if your leg. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really drilled to the wall. Yeah, if we're struggling for dear life that day, bar 100%. <laughs> Okay, um, left leg or right leg? Right. Right leg. As the working leg? Yes, thin leg, stronger. Okay. Um, on day or on day don pirouette? On day or. Okay, okay. Arabesque or devil pay side? Devil pay also. Ara Arabesque? Arab okay, that was six. <laughs> <laughs> Or don't, I, I vote arabesque as well. Um, petite allegro or grand allegro? Petite. I like um, petite. I like the footwork, jumping. Actually, both. Both. I'm a jumper. I really like jumping. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Both. I feel like if you stay for petite, like sometimes, you know, you might need a moment, but if mm -hmm. the, you have to it's, you stay right. for at least to get one. One one pass. One good zigzag. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then that 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 sometimes that's it. Okay. <laughs> Lateral or contraction? Lateral. Tennis ball or theraband? Tennis ball. Don't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Matinee or evening performance? Evening. Evening. What is your favorite article of clothing or accessory? Shoes. You have to think hard about that one too. Yes, me loves. Yeah, to too too many things. He loves to shop. Everything. I need everything. I need a bag. I need shoes. Top. The jeans. Jeans. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm feeling that that part. But I do like to shop. You know this. Shoes. 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 Okay. What is your favorite season? Summer. Summer. It's uh, Miami. Um, what is your favorite meal? Nowadays, it's fish and kale. Healthy, healthy. Healthy, I know. She's working too. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite um, vocal artist or favorite music artist to listen to? City Girls. <laughs> That's right. the honest truth. You know I want to be a member. <laughs> she said, Jasmine, I love you so much. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that took me out. <laughs> you know I talk about city girls all the time. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, candid. Candid conversation. Yes. Everyone is dying in the comments. Yep. yep. Okay. What Chris your... knows. <laughs> I'm trying to keep going, but I can't stop laughing. Okay. And what 
what is your favorite pastime in New York City? What is your favorite thing to do in the city? Um. work and hang out with friends maybe at Times Square I don't really go out in New York because we're always busy and I'm always away from New York if I have a chance to escape yeah yeah you do you do go home which is good I mean it's the break it's it's where you get a moment and um yeah so I said yeah Antoine Miami all the way Miami all the way just let's get some of the questions Let's get to some of these questions. I feel like there's some good ones. Hmm. Oh, this is a great one. This is undefined. This is Meg. Happy graduation. Happy graduation. Um, <laughs> graduated from the uh, Ailey Form BFA program. Oh, yes. Okay. Congratulations. Yes, congrats. Forward of class 2020. What would you have told yourself as an Ailey 2 dancer that you've learned now in the first company? Um that taking care of your body is very important. Rolling out, stretching, um, mm -hmm. how to maintain your body, but also how to work with injuries and not have that be the downfall, but a learning experience. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that and adding on as well, just because, uh, you know, an alien to Thing a lot as we both know um but that six week I, I would say no one can prepare you for a six week city center season or a four month tour or sitting on a plane and then a, you know and we also used to live on in alien 2 we used to live on a bus you know we used to bus around we didn't fly as often in alien <laughs> but I, also, I i had a i thought it was super fun you know, because it felt like a it felt like the road trip i never had as a kid mm -hmm. on a bus with all of your friends we used to make little beds on the floor in the um in the seats um, right you know it's different but you're just young you're just younger you could sit right. and up and yeah no yeah someone said live on the bus yeah we live right we do it was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a great one from oh claude we love oh from dallas flat just i love that. He's, he's amazing. What is your dream role to perform with Triple ADT? Um, a alien classic dream role would be Night Creature. Definitely. Um, watching Sarita Allen when we had our um, happy hour session. And even before that, seeing when I first got into the company, seeing um, like Jacqueline, um, green do night creature and others do night creature i would just sit on the side and just like amazed because you're just throwing this character flirtatious you have ballet you have modern you have jazz it's like everything in one so yeah i would definitely like to do night creature yeah night creature is it's one of those ballets that i still love to do it it's one of those ballets that when you watch it just I think everyone has worked so hard to make it so effortless and then you mm -hmm. like oh technique yeah okay all right yeah like, <laughs> oh, at you know early in the morning and those blues so yeah that's yeah. that's oh I'd love to see you do that I can't wait I'll be on the yeah. side I said I'll be behind you or on the side just <laughs> again okay this is from TCDE Dancers. What is your creative process like when choreographing? Um, so sometimes I will come in with phrases. Um, sometimes I won't. I do not like choreographing in the studio, funny to say. I find myself most creative when I'm outside of the studio. Um, like maybe in my living room, in the bathroom, I may be like, okay, this, 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 this. Um, yeah. I also like to um, do a hands-on experiment with the dancers to see how they move and also incorporate that. So it's not just, oh, well, I'm putting these steps on you because I want you to do that. I want to see how they move, how they express themselves and collaborate that into my choreographic process for a final piece um, so yes 
We may I may come in with work. I may not. We may from scratch. Um, so it all depends. It varies sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That it, it kind of, or whenever it hits you, you allow it to just uh, yeah. take not, over. Yeah, it's not forced at all. Mm -hmm. Ooh. How did it feel when you found out you got Lady T? Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, be well, because I was a temp, I think the pressure of being a temp was harder than actually hearing, okay, well, you have the job. So I had to go through a temp job and then go to the audition, re-audition to even get my spot. So it was like a relief. I guess it was just, I was like, oh my gosh. Because I was in the same position with Jessica. We came in at the same time, temps, audition, the same audition. Um, and I was just like, Jessica, we did it. Um, and it was just, I don't know, you dream, you dream of this goal. You work so hard. And to actually see it come true, it's like, I I, I don't even have words to even uh, put it back. There are words. words. It's, you know, it's, what's super special is, I, I think I said this to you the other today, maybe this past year, but, um, you know, we all, we all dance together in Ailey too. And at that age, it's just your dream to be part of this company. And that last audition, we were all together and it was Kalia and me and you and Jessica and Corinne. And it was all of us together and we all had our different ways, like it was, those two and now we're actually all together again and right. it's I don't think I think and you correct me if I'm wrong too it's it's this other layer of having it happen and then you look to your right and it's still Kalia you look to your left and it's still Yasmin you look in front of you yeah. and, uh, and it's we've just grown together we used to call it ourselves the the crybaby crew and Ailey too because we would just be abused and everybody would just start crying <laughs> Yasmin was the first ones yeah, it's me this <laughs> body, but let the right moment hit her and she'll start crying. <laughs> the crying. Yeah. And, especially uh, our last especially our last show with Ailey too. I think it was definitely bittersweet, but I definitely was doing um yellow and I was like, This is definitely not gonna be my last revelation. It's like I was speaking it into existence and now that it's really happening, it's just like wow. Just put right, it out right. in the universe and Timing is everything. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good one. Can you pin? Oh, from Maya Addy underscore. Can you pinpoint a defining moment in your training slash foundational years that has contributed to the artist that you are today? A defining moment. Oh, and different different reasons. <laughs> um, okay. mm. I would say, <sighs> wow, <laughs> that's a hard one. That that is a hard one, only because, um having one like there are so many it's like the defining yeah. rotate you know like they the questions that make you think are, are are the good ones because there's so many that define who you are and make up who you are as a whole i want to answer that do you want to do one question and maybe it'll come to you in that because that's a good question yeah okay my addy we're gonna get that question it's it's a good one it's so good yeah. that we're gonna <laughs> let it Maybe we'll end with it and we'll come back to it. Okay. All right. Oh. This, I just have to post this because this is um, a funny coworker of ours. His name is Solomon Dumas and he wanted to know what you missed about him. Solomon. Uh, specifically, so I thought <laughs> that was, uh, uh, for those, we, we love Solomon. He is our, he's, he's also a light and someone that we need um, more. We could clone <laughs> Solomon. We could. 
um, because he's just, he's a rock for so many of us. So Solomon says hi in his own way. I miss you, Solomon. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I just I, uh, I I I saw it. It was the very first that came in, and I just I of couldn't course it uh, was. ignore it. Um, of course it was. <laughs> Where do you see yourself artistically in ten years? Um, in ten years, um either with Ailey or um, I would like to start my own company. Um, or I don't know. I, I don't want to say I'm going to be a dancer and then a choreographer. I want to put those two um, at the same, I don't want to say the same level because it's definitely different. Um, but I want to do both at the same time. Um, so yeah, I want to say emerging definitely in the highest peak of choreography. I want to say, um, I am interested in to see into seeing how Europe may play out because that also was a dream. Um, doing commercial, um, you know, just finding different voices in dance to reach out to that I know that I wanted to, but it's just timing, so. Audition. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> You'll be the principal. Oh. Rolling, really? my eye, rolling my eyes. You can't say that and then roll your eyes. That was me being sarcastic. Now <laughs> 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 oh, this is how we. Uh, how you thought about your uh, your question of a defining moment? I I would say in Ailey two, I think. With the focus solo from Jewel D. Lane. Um, mm. Oh, I think I have a photo of you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> bringing, definitely bringing a personal life experience that shifted um, me as an artist, as a person, um, into that process. And I think that was my first time actually opening up. Um, yeah, speaking about a situation that had happened, even though I don't like to talk about my feelings and things like that. So I think that was my first time in actually pushing myself to get through the process because the process is hard. Joel was like, "Let's go! Like you have, you have it. You have what you have it. Just speak your truth and what you're experiencing at this moment." And yeah, I kind of loved how we've come back full circle to where our conversation started and it's been about speaking your truth and allowing your art and your platform to do that um yeah. and we're so blessed to have this art and platform that allows us to speak our truth whether it's like this in a conversation or whether it's on stage in a role like this the role like Lazarus it's such a it's so needed for it's like it's it's our time to to share our stories and our history through the art and we have so many legends <laughs> and on the shoulders of and we think of mr ailey and i think of you know miss sylvia waters and she's jamison and, and and just to know that we can continue to be in a company be in a space where we can do that is just um it, it helps me wake up each morning with more to give and i i feel the same for you yeah I wanted to ask you, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to steal the last question, but uh, oh what, <laughs> what do you want people to take away from seeing you perform? And it can be an adult, it can be a young kid from those many performances, it can be a stranger, or your family members, what do you want people to leave the theater with having witnessed 
the beauty and grace and strength and poise that <clears throat> knowing that this is not the Yasmin um, knowing that this is not the Yasmin of okay well she's an alien there was a process and um, this um, took many teachers to help me find my voice mentors um, and to know that our black skin is is our main you know source that no one can have or reject deny whether the world may reject or deny it but it's it's our beauty um and we have to own up to it and be confident in it um and just to take my you know lessons from here um and just achieve your goals if you have a goal set it and go for it because nothing is impossible so. you are you're amazing and i i've told you how i feel about you we have you know <laughs> once in a while um we'll have a moment where we stop and you've always found a way i think just to be so beautifully yourself um in such an individual and all the things that you said, I think that you just do without saying it. You exemplify beauty. You are someone on stage. I, I don't even know if I can can you say when it like you and Shavar in that way, I'm like, look at this beautiful glorification and celebration of these two beautiful chocolate people on stage dancing a story that was rooted in their own history. And um I just I am so blessed to be your friend and i can't wait to be in the wings just yelling probably too loud and screaming in this <laughs> for, for some more years because i think that this is just the beginning um and i love this sisterhood i love this bond and i'm i'm really uh just honored to have had this conversation with you that we have a lot but i don't think i always get to tell you how amazing i think you are and I get to do it in front of everybody. <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, the, the annoying little sister friend dynamic. So <laughs> yeah, that's why she's laughing. It's but all love, guys. <laughs> all, so much love. I just, um, I just want to say thank you. And I just want to thank you for being so candid earlier about how you're feeling and how we need to continue to push and continue to grow and continue to educate and get involved and make a change yes. and so that we support you we stand um with with you and and we're here and we are doing what we can um in our own platforms and i just want to thank you yasmin for just being i think the full equivalent of a silent storm that is that is who you are you are quiet but powerful and we love you and this organization loves you and i love you and i just want to thank you for a great conversation thank you courtney celeste spears <laughs> i love you love and light guys love stay and light strong. yes stay strong love and, love and light and stay strong thank you everybody so much thank for you. conversations um thanks for all of the comments and all of the laughs i think we all needed just a moment just to sit and come together. Um, so thank you. Join us Wednesdays and Saturdays at 1 p.m. This has been a great one. I love you, Yasmin. And um, love you. stay positive, my beautiful sister. All right. Thank you, everybody. Tune in. Stay for alien access. And uh, we'll see you.